Thank you for watching the most profitable show in crypto history. Stop everything that you're doing. Now it's crypto time. Welcome to the Crypto Villas Show. Fala pessoal, bem-vindo ao canal do Criptovila, eu sou o Criptovila e estou aqui para uma entrevista especial, mas vamos, vamos fazer a introduçãozinha antes, tá? Então, se você é novo no meu canal, vai lá, se inscreve, toca no sininho, todas as notificações, se inscrever, sininho, todas as notificações, tá bom? E deixa o like aí, deixa o like aí. Também, se possível, me siga no Twitter, tá? E no Instagram também, que eu jogo informações rápidas primeiro lá, como vocês sabem, né pessoal? Pessoal... Também é outra coisa, se quiser conversar mais, se, se interagir mais, tal, tenho dúvida disso, disso, tal, tal, aí entra no grupo do Telegram, que aí um ajuda o outro, é bem bacana lá, tá? Mas aí já é para quem está um pouquinho mais avançado, tal. É, um outro ponto, hoje, dia muito especial, né? Vou entrevistar o Andy da Synchrony, tá? Sempre lembrando, pessoal, também vai ter aqui é, um airdropzinho de 60 dólares, tá? Vou selecionar três perguntas, as três primeiras que eu selecionar, vou ganhar 20 dólares cada uma delas. Então vai deixando sua pergunta aí, sem pergunta genérica aí, pessoal. Tem que ter estudado um pouquinho, ou entra lá no site, faz uma pergunta mais de acordo, tá? Aí a gente, a gente seleciona, tá bom? Então vou chamar ele aqui para o show, pessoal. Vou chamar ele aqui para o show. Hey, Andy. Thank you so much for coming. Big pleasure to have you here. Hey, thanks for having me on the show. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, so, well, uh, the first question that uh, I'd like to ask you is what Synchrony is about, right? And can you do a, a small introduction about Synchrony and maybe about yourself too? Sure, sure. Um, so Synchrony, I could get into all the weeds, but it breaks down to really three things, right? So Synchrony is a copy trading platform. So, you know, I have a wallet, you have a wallet, I want to copy your trades because, you know, you know a bit more about crypto. I can just follow all of the trades that you um, make in your wallet. Um, so that's the first thing that we do. The second thing that we do is um, indexes. So kind of like the S&P 500 or the FTSE 100, basically what it what an index is, is a collection of, of assets, right? So like a basket of assets. Mm -hmm. So in the context of crypto, it would be, you know, on Solana, uh, the top 10 tokens on Solana by market cap as represented by like a single asset. So, you know, in terms of a passive investment vehicle, it's, uh, it's nice for me, I'm kind of lazy. So I like that. It's more appealing than like the, the, you know, really, really rapid. Um, <laughs> the other thing that we use these indexes for though, which is kind of one of our USPs is we use those calculation methodologies to help bind our wallets, the copy trade wallet, because if I want to follow somebody on the leaderboard, if I want to follow their wallet on the leaderboard, I don't know who they are, right? I don't know like, you know, their their investment like risk portfolio, all of that stuff. So if we bind it to an index, for example, I'm only going to trade within the top 10 tokens on Solana um, okay. by, you know, seven day moving average. That means that if I'm following you and you make a trade outside of those parameters, I'm going to ignore that. So if, you know, I, I'm not a huge fan of like meme coins. So if you go into a bunch of meme coins, Same. you know, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like Doge is inflationary. It doesn't make any sense to me, like, you know, from a fiscal standpoint. Um, or on the other side of it, it's just like if you want to white list certain tokens, you know, like maybe chain links outside of your of, of the calculation methodology that you bind your your wallet to, you can white label um, or whitelist uh, chain link. So if they trade outside of it, but they do trade chain link, then I'll make that trade as well. So it allows for some safety for the user. So you, so I can follow, you know, somebody's a stranger. I can just follow a wallet address. I don't have to know who they are. I don't have to know their background or trust them or, or anything like that. So, you know, it kind of opens things up. And then the third and, and, and um, for me is the most exciting thing. Uh, maybe not for everybody else. And we were talking about this a little bit uh, earlier is uh, the analytics that ties it all together. Right. So Synchrony also uses, you know, it's typical on-chain data, you know, like just what transactions have taken place. We also use on-chain data that is not, um, that's not written. So it's not an actual transaction. It's uh, query data. So if users are like looking at their wallet, I can see if a user's looking at their wallet, right? And on the blockchain, mm -hmm. that's just a, it's a call. It's free, obviously. So you, if I'm checking my wallet, the, the RPC um, validators, they see that. And so we're, we're starting to index that. And so we can start to see like customer sentiment, what time of day do people, you know, 
interact with radium or, you know, so you start to have like higher fidelity into what people are doing. And then we also take, um, you know, off chain data like socials, um, you know, how many followers you have, Google search trends, you know, hashtag trends, that sort of thing. And then also platform data, and we put it all together. So obviously, once the platform has a lot more users, we'll be able to stack these things up like, you know, the here are transactions that are happening on chain, here's like the call data, you know, that's not written to the chain. Here's like social like trends. And then here's platform data as well. And we put it all together in this like stack of high fidelity data to uh, provide users, um, you know, better insights into what they're trying to um, accomplish. And then I guess a little bit about me. Uh, I've been in crypto for, for a long time. I got into crypto in 2010. Um, I was oh. working for, <laughs> for a Berkshire Hathaway subsidiary. Um, it, I got put in charge of a, a research and development um, division. And so it was a great, it was a great job. I love the job. I, you know, I still friends with my old boss and everything. I didn't have, I is research and development. So I didn't have to actually um, make profit. I just had to like find cool things to do. And one of the things I was looking at one of the projects, there were a few successes, maybe one or two out of like a hundred failures. Um, this is one of the failures I was looking into um, PGP encryption for compliance purposes. Like how can we safely send data Mm -hmm. overseas to our, our agents in, in, in Taiwan or, or, or something like that, um, that, you know, uh, project failed. <laughs> I failed a lot, but in the process of looking through PGP encryption, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, what's Bitcoin? Oh, it's this novel kind of idea. It was so cheap. It was like, you know, less than a dollar or something at the time for Bitcoin. And I just thought it was fun. It was novel. You know, um, one of my claims to, to shame is that, um, the first 150 Bitcoin I bought, I got scammed out of. <laughs> but at the time I was like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just $200, <laughs> you know? And now I'm like, oh man. And then, you know, I proceeded to not understand custody. Mm. Um, and I thought that Mount Gox, and you know where this story is going. Yeah. I thought that Mount mm. Gox, after I'd accumulated some, you know, through 2013, 2014, I just left all my money on there, you know, on this platform. But Mount Gox was for Magic the Gathering trading card like trading platform. It wasn't, the infrastructure wasn't built for, to trade uh, Bitcoin. So I ended up losing, you know, even more money. Uh, <laughs> there. At the time I was like, oh no, it's like, you know, $10,000 or something worth of Bitcoin. But now it's like, oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, you know, that, those lessons were hard lessons learned, but that helped, you know, keep me, it helped me get to where I am now, you know, because I went through all of these, heartaches, getting wrecked and, you know, not understanding custody. Um, it's very difficult to understand. That's one of the reasons why we, we made Synchrony is because we've all had such difficult times trying to navigate, um, you know, what's, you know, this this entire new industry, right? Because it, it intersects at, at finance and at software development. So both of those things are kind of dry subjects. They're not very easy for, you know, regular people to get in, but everybody's interested. You know, my grandma knows what an NFT is. Right. Ooh. Like she's asking me what she should put in her bags. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, like, you know, a lot of people are interested. But as soon as I'm like, oh, OK, so a blockchain is an immutable ledger. As soon as I say that, people are like, oh, OK, never mind. Never mind. I don't want to. You know what I mean? Like, so um, it's been a very uh, sort of interesting experience. And then, you know, in 2019, um, I went because uh, I've done a lot of development work, but I'd never really mm -hmm. written smart contracts. So in 2019, I made the plunge and went back to school um, for to write. Uh, smart contracts on solidity uh which is funny because we're writing smart contracts in rust so there's not a lot of overlap right now because we built on on solana but yeah that's a little bit um sort of a little bit about me uh in in, in between there you know I, I also did uh, operations at a digital marketing agency um and they with heavy focus on analytics it was actually called c4 analytics so you know that's where a lot of my passion for for the analytics side of things comes in um and some of the marketing as well so but yeah again pleasure to be here no, thank you, thank you. Uh, you said many things that I always, I always share with my audience too, uh, such as uh, I, I also don't invest in, in meme coin, mm -hmm. right? And uh, about being scammed, uh, many, many people uh, here in Brazil have many noobs, right? Yep. And uh, unfortunately, you have many bad actors, right? And uh, it's it's very normal. You you get scammed the the, the first time, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, then you have to 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 learn the lesson, right? And keep going, right? Yeah. And uh, don't be shame about this. <laughs> it's 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 a hard lesson, but sometimes it, 
that's the way, right? <laughs> yeah, that you got to learn. My my brother, who's also in the space, my brother runs a VC and, and marketing firm, and he's also got like a tech company that he's building out. He, he he's been in this space like on the VC and marketing side. He's worked through like maybe 300 projects at this point invested in himself. So he's like getting on the bigger side. He always has this line. He says, um, you're, you're not in crypto until you've had life-changing losses. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Perfect. Uh, and if someone says, well, uh, I mean, I, I was never scammed. Probably is not true. Probably is not true. <laughs> Or the, the people is, is just a noob in the market, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And another thing that you that you talked a little bit about the the analysis, right? Uh, you guys are considering uh, many on-chain analysis, mm -hmm. right? And uh, here in my in my channel, we do a weekly show uh, called Friday on Chain, right? And we we do a lot of on-chain analysis with more than 40 for charts and the fundamentals analysis, right? Mm -hmm. Not not meme coin analysis. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and the people really love, right? And it, that's that's very good. I think it's a very interesting tool, right? Oh, yeah. uh, by using synchrony because you you can combine it, uh, on chain things, right? Yeah, and so the ultimate goal. I mean, there's a couple of goals for the people that we're targeting here because you know you have institutional clients who will want data for different things. Then you have retail clients who want data for different things. Institutional clients will probably want to use our API, um, you know, get big batches of data so they can make their own, so they can apply to their platform. On the retail level, for me, one of the things that I stand behind, and I say, I say this again and again and again, is, you know, our, our job as builders is to reduce the time between what you want and the actual thing manifesting, right? So mm -hmm. like, if I think of an Apple, it should just, Appear in my hand, you know, if I'm a builder, and that's not exactly feasible, but we, we can reduce that. And what the retail user wants is not more charts. They don't necessarily want more, um, more things to look at, to take up the time. They want high fidelity, actionable data, right? They don't, they don't care. A lot of people don't care what chain they're on. They don't care, you know, if this LP token is staking over here, they just want their money to work harder for them. Right. Like if for, for me, the ultimate idea is like I come on, I click a button and everything is optimized and deployed exactly for me, tailored to me. Right. We can't quite do that. But, you know, one of the examples, a concrete example of what we're trying to do with this is the wallet trust factor. So we're applying those those various metrics that, that we're talking about to um, to a wallet. Right. And so when you search a wallet, instead of bringing up, oh, here's all the transaction history, here's all of this stuff, which is interesting. You can dig into that. But what I want to do is provide like red, yellow, green, you know, or like a scale of one to 10, like like simplify this mm -hmm. experience for users, because, you know, if you want, if you're a more advanced user, you can click in and be like, okay, why is it like this? Like, let's look at the, this transaction history that's defining why it's gotten this score. But a lot of people, they'll go in, they'll see, okay green light go. Okay. All right. I, I trust it. You know what I mean? So that's what we're trying to do is like, just reduce, um, reduce some of the friction that's incurred, uh, you know, trying to interact with DeFi, you know, cause it's quite complicated. Like if you're, you know, I remember last yeah. summer I was trying to, I was trying to get um, my co-founder to get into like more of the DeFi summer stuff. And I was like, Oh no, not last summer, two summers ago. Wow. Time is just, just crazy <laughs> crypto you know it changes everything and i was like oh yeah you, you got to get into like octify i don't know if you octify was like it pumped really nicely and then i don't think it's doing anything now um it was a really nice return for me but because they had huge apy um mm -hmm. but the problem is is that i was like okay you got to go to this place you got to get this token and this token then you go over here you deposit them and you get another token you take that new one and you move it over to another place and it's just like This is this is crazy. There's too many. There's too many moving parts. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's definitely something that we we're, we're trying to do is just you know provide um, uh, a higher quality experience so you can spend more time like with your family or with your dog or going outside. You know what I mean? Like people people are more important than 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 this. So we're trying to you know optimize this experience. Okay, okay. And uh, can you talk a little about uh, indices? How can users make better use of that? Yeah, so our index platform is is quite interesting. Um, there's a couple of layers to it, right? For, for from an institutional standpoint, for like a hedge fund standpoint, I can go in and I can create my own um, my own index, right? You know, top 20 tokens on Solana, 
by, you know, 30 day moving average, by market cap, by, you know, whatever these parameters that we want to, you know, create these um, indexes. And what you're left with is like a single asset that represents this calculation. And I mean, there was a study by Vanguard um, last year or at some point recently where they analyzed like indexes, index funds versus actively managed funds and index funds, they outperform active managed funds like about 80% of the time. <laughs> so these, but it's not as fun. It's not, there, there's not as much action. If you, I just buy this thing and it sits there, I can't like, you know, I'm just like looking at it and waiting, but I mean, it's kind of like that Berkshire Hathaway approach, right? It's just like this really solid, you know, it's um, uh, volatility, like uh, it's a little more stable because you have this range of assets that some might go up, some might go down. And so, you know, overall, it, it represents like a, a healthier investment vehicle, at least for me. The, the one step deeper that we go is we can actually have indexes of indexes, right? So I have like an index that has maybe top 10 tokens on Solana by market cap. Eventually, when we're cross-chain, top 10 tokens on Polygon, top 10 tokens on BSC, um, top five wallets. You know, if we're looking at, at the copy trading wallets as indexes themselves in this sort of abstract mm -hmm. way, we can get... We can represent, you know, our top five uh, trading wallets on Synchrony as well. Because for me, I'm kind of lazy. I don't like doing all of the TA, FA. Like, I got too much. I got to build Synchrony. I don't have time to go in and do the, the DJ and things I used to do. Mm -hmm. um, I just want one asset to rule them all. I just want one single asset for me that has, you know, exposure to the the change that I want exposure to, and then also to like, you know, maybe some exposure to to like, you know, the the, the trading wallets. So it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting take on indexes and the fact that, you know, these indexes, we're looking at them as, as calculations for um, our copy trade wallets as well. So that provides users like some of that safety we we're talking about. So there's like a couple of uh, uh, uses for, for these indexes. Okay. Uh, um, can you talk uh, about synchronous solutions for the farmer's market? You already talked a little, right? But uh, if you have something uh, to add. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I mean, like, like I said, I I don't I I feel like there's a lot of opportunity in the space to optimize this experience, right? The the farmers market for us when people are like, oh, like what about this competitor or that competitor? For me, there is no competitors because we're just trying to get everything on in one spot, right? At, like I don't when I'm doing research on a token, if I see a token like. And I'm, 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 you know, scrolling through our dashboard or, or through some of our, 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 you know, aggregate functions. And I see a token. I want to be able to like click on that, have an accordion open, get like, you know, top level information, recent like, you know, charting, some uh, a paragraph or two about the, the item. And if I want to trade it, I can just buy it right there. I don't want to have to go through these other different places. So that's one of the things we're trying to do is, is create this frictionless um, marketplace for, for users to, to interact with whatever ecosystem they want. Obviously, we're starting first on Solana, but you know, uh, long term, you, users don't care really that much what chain they're on. They just want their money to work harder for them. You know, exactly. so that's what we're trying to do. Uh, yeah, uh, one more question here. Uh, of course, Synchrony, you have many, many tools, many things. But in, in a way, do you think that Yearn Finance, for example, is a competitor? Uh, that's interesting. Uh, I, I I do think on on some level, you know, urine uh, they they they're great. I, I love them. They they made me like a ton of money when they you know. <laughs> I remember that it just like pumped. It just kept going and going. It's like it's more yeah. expensive than Bitcoin. That's crazy. Um, I think they did a great job. Um, we we're actually uh, when we did our demo day, Andre Cruncher was um, actually in the panel before us. Great guy. I mean, he has some really really solid insights on he, he, he knows what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. I think that we are definitely going to have them on our platform as well. That's going to be something that you can inter interact with our, on our platform as well. So we want to just keep like aggregating all of these things on some levels, what they've done, you know, is fantastic. It, it really helped kick off some of these DeFi that the concept of DeFi, you know, in 2017, people were like, oh, smart contracts, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But there wasn't a lot going, going on. Yeah. And I'm still waiting on ADA. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting on ADA. Uh, but like, we, we didn't really realize, like, we had the idea of what it could potentially be, but there wasn't the infrastructure in place for us to really leverage these smart contracts. But now you have these infrastructure level projects like Balancer, Compound, 
Ave, you know, uh, you've got these wonderful Oracle um, networks like Chainlink. Um, I, I love Chainlink. I, I, I think they're just they're they're just the, the best. I, I, I and they've also made me a you know a ton of money. So are they, you uh, Link Marini? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a Link Marine for sure. Um, <laughs> even though like the price recently hasn't been great, I don't look at. It's not all about price at the end of the day. You know what I mean? But anyway, to 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 get back to the sort of Wi-Fi thing, I think that um, you know, in some capacities, they do compete with us, but in others, they don't have the analytics tools. They don't have the dashboard. They don't have all these things. So anytime there is like, and there's like another, like, um, so, uh, Solana based project called soul rise and they do sort of indexes. It's more binary and they don't reconstitute or, uh, they don't, uh, reconstitute. They do rebalance, but they rebalance to static allocations. So like there are these other ones, but it's just like, Hey, yeah, we'll have, we'll have your indexes on our, uh, we'll showcase your indexes on our platform as well. We'll showcase Wi-Fi on our platform as well. And the users can make their decision, right? When you have these things right next to each other, me as a user, in terms of like a use case, I'm going on there and I'm like, okay, I have a very low risk profile and I don't want to be very active here. I don't want to do the copy trading. I don't want to do this. What, what does that mean to me? It, it means that like, I'm going to lean more towards indexes. I'm going to lean more towards these more passive investment vehicles or, or these aggregators, um, these optimizers like YFI. So I, I think part of what we're providing, you know, in terms of the farmer's market is everybody can see right next to each other, like and compare and make their own judgments instead of right now, I'm going to go over to BSC. I'm going to see what's going on in pancake swap. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to, you know, see what's going on in sushi swap or you, you, whatever it is. You're just bouncing all over the place. And then users get lazy because it's just like, well, I have all my funds on BSC. Am I going to bridge this back? to Ethereum and then get it over to Polygon and then do this. No, I'm just going to keep it over here. So what we're trying to do ultimately is you get in, it doesn't matter where it's, what chain it's on. It's just, does it work for you? Um, so that's, that's kind of like where we're going with that. Perfect. Perfect. And uh, now some question about the team. Can you talk a little bit about the synchronous chain? How many people are working? Where are you guys based? Yeah, we're all over the world right now. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you can see in my eyes, but we, we, you know, because of the time zone, it's it's we do have really late nights, really long days. Um, I'm right now. I'm I'm stranded in in Kansas. Uh, I was in the process of moving back to Hong Kong, um, and Hong Kong closed its borders, so it's quite difficult to uh, to get over there right now. It's fine. My mom's got a great dog, and I love her, so it's it's it works <laughs> out. Um, uh, my co-founder, he made it to Hong Kong. He was originally based in the UK and he made it to Hong Kong, um, which is where I'm from originally. And my dad and my brother are out there. Um, so he's based in Hong Kong right now. And then uh, we have Med, who's based in Paris. Uh, he's, he does. Uh, so Andrew co-founder, he does. A, he's lead architect. He does a lot of the rest development. Um, uh, Med, he does, is a securities uh, expert. Uh, not not securities as in like the regulatory thing, but like security for like QC, like, you know, uh, mm -hmm. code based security. Um, and he also does a lot of integration UX UI. Uh, so he's based in Paris. And then we have Soli, who's based in Morocco. And then we have uh, Maurice, who's based in Baltimore. And then um, we have uh, we're we're also onboarding um, uh, Lamar. I think he's based in. Nigeria it's well crypto's 24 7 right so you kind of have yeah. to have coverage like all over <laughs> uh so we're, we're all over the place um it's it's a great team we are we are uh, starting to like really build the team out as well especially on the development side of things everybody's pretty much a dev except for for Maurice um he does a lot of the marketing and comms and everything um so yeah yeah it, it, great team couldn't be happier uh with you know locking these guys in uh Med and I have been working on projects for two years, you know, we started building uh, projects together on Ethereum. Then we actually ended up building a project for digital asset, which is a uh, it's an enterprise blockchain. So there's no tokens or anything like that. But we built this blockchain. It's more for like like financial institutions or things where you're really leveraging the blockchain for its immutability and the, mm -hmm. the trustlessness. And that actually got purchased by the Australian Security uh, Securities Exchange. Oh. Yeah, so that was huge. Uh, it's a two trillion dollar entity. You know, purchased this like you know this little thing from from, from mostly Mohammed. I, I didn't do a lot of it. Uh, it was mostly Matt who did did a lot of that. Um, and then Andrew and I. I've known Andrew for well, he went to school with my younger brother. So they, oh. my brother and him, have known each other for like seventeen years or something. So I, I've known Andrew for for less than that. But you know, we're still we're still friends 
from way before we used to just play video games together, you know, before we like, <laughs> before we, you know, did anything else. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the team in a nutshell. And then, you know, we are, you know, growing pretty, pretty rapidly. We're, we're, you know, in the process of interviewing and hiring. It's just, there's so many moving parts. It's hard to, to keep on top of it all, you know? Okay. So. okay. And, uh, well, are there any partnerships or backers that uh, you would like to highlight? Maybe some new partnership that you, you, We'll say here for my audience. <laughs> oh man, um, there's one I really, really want to talk about. I, I, I can't. It's a, it's a, it's a surprise. But we do have, we do have like a ton of other partnerships um, coming up. Uh, we just we announced our dopamine partnership. So they, dopamine's amazing. They've got like 1.5 million users, like 300k active monthly yeah. users. It's a, you know, it's a mobile, um, mobile experience. They're a great team. Um, we are also. Um, I don't know if I can talk about that. Well, I mean, I'm just going to say like, we're really friendly with slope. They're, those guys are great. Um, you know, there's, there's a couple of these uh, uh, we, we love working with other projects, right. Um, you know, we're, we're really close with uh, it's not like def necessarily like a partnership. Like we're going to like leverage each other's technology, but we're very close with only one, the uh, other Solana based project. The office that we have set up in Hong Kong is actually in the same building as 20 other projects So we're going to be able to get a lot. Yeah, there's um, refinables in there. Uh, only one is in there. Um, Kevin Ty from Linear Finance. Linear Finance is great. Um, no, no partnership there. I just Kevin Ty's great. Uh, he's he's really cool and he's been very very helpful in like guiding us through this process. Kevin Ty and and Leon Lee. Uh, Leon's the uh, founder of Only One. They've been through the process already, so they've been helping us like, oh, for community management, watch out for this or like when you're launching, watch out for that. So we've had a lot of these um, these really, really helpful sort of uh, uh, people like help, you know, push this thing along for us. So we're, we're very, very thankful to them and to our community for making this happen. That's that's good. That's good. So uh, let's talk a little about the, the token. Can you do an introduction and talk more about the token economics? Use cases. Sure, sure, sure. Um, so the, uh, the the tokens live. Uh, it's SCY. We're we're on Gate. Um, io and uh, Radium. We have uh, tomorrow. We're making an announcement for a central exchange um, listing on in three days. So it's another another nice one. And then we have another uh, exchange lined up at the end of the month. Um, And then hopefully next month we're going to get on one of my favorite exchanges of all time. I cannot talk. I can't, I can't say it, but uh, <laughs> you know, because it's just all the legal stuff that you have to sign and you can't, you know, say who it is, but yeah, we do have some really big partnerships and listing announcements coming up um, over there. Uh, the synchrony token itself um, it's a utility token and we, I wanted to make sure it was absolutely packed with utility. So you need it for as access um, to the advanced features for all three things I was talking about. So copy trading, you'll, uh, if you, we can do a basic one for free, like that's not a problem. Uh, you know, we'll have a tiered model. You see it all, all the time, like out in the wild for any sort of subscription based service, it'll be a subs subscription based service. Um, and you know, for advanced copy trading, if you want to tailor your own index or you want to white list certain tokens, you'll have to stake SVY or use SVY, um, to, uh, To get to get access to that to that feature, um, also for indexes, you need to stake a certain am amount to launch your own index, um, and you can all and users can also stake on indexes as sort of like an insurance, um, and they'll also share in, in some of the withdrawal fees that are uh, uh, that are generated when people like you know cash out and the arbitrage opportunities also within indexes, right? Because you have your your index token, and then you have the collection of assets underneath. And those don't always match up. And so in between those places that it doesn't match up, there's opportunity to make a profit. And so you'll get access to, to be able to do that um, as well with the token. And then for the analytics, obviously my, my favorite, my favorite part of it, you know, <laughs> as we get deeper and deeper into what these analytics can provide on a, on a individual level, like for me, if I want higher fidelity, more information, more <clears throat> customer sentiment, then you know you'll have to also utilize SEY. And then for institutions, if they want to dial into our API API after a certain amount of calls, you'll need to have, you know, you need to stake or, or use uh, the synchrony token in order to um, get access to that. In terms of the the, the tokenomics, um, we've uh, 
we we wanted to make sure that the community knew that this is a long term project, which is why, you know, team tokens um, don't get lo- unlocked for another year. And then there's you know, quite a, a, a long vesting schedule after that, um, because, you know, we wanted everybody to know, like, this isn't like we're, we're here for the long term. You know, this is sure. for, for me. One of my goals is to beat the banks. Right. I think like the banks have become the villains. They used to be like, oh, we'll keep the money safe. But now it's like now I understand more about like DeFi because what DeFi is, is you get to be the bank and the pitfalls like you were talking about earlier, like with like with scams, you got to watch out for for these you know bad actors. The pitfalls are you got to keep your money safe. Right. But the advantage is that when you lend, you get 100 percent of that interest. You get 100 percent of the APY. And so it's not the 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 bankers walking away with, you know, after 2000, I mean, if you look at the timeline, 2008 crisis was because mm-hmm. of, you know, like misappropriation of like power and funds. And it was driven a lot by the banking uh, sector. And lo and behold, 2009, <laughs> the Bitcoin, <laughs> Bitcoin white paper comes out, you know what I mean? And so like d- crypto exists pretty much to, to help like get around that. So that's, that's what we're, we're trying to do is, is, is really, uh, you know, put the power back in, into the people's hands here. So uh, th- this kind of thing, I, I always share here with my audience, right? I always say that uh, in the crypto space with uh, DeFi, uh, it's much more democratic because uh, mm-hmm. your money has the same value that uh, a politician money mm-hmm. or other people money. It doesn't matter. Uh, the codes, uh, the code doesn't look the the person, you know. Uh, it's the same interest rate, it's the same APY. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's much more fair, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think too when we when we start stepping outside of 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 crypto, because right now I think people are looking at crypto as like as two things. It's either like money or it's NFTs <laughs> or metaverse. You know what I mean? Um, there's so much more potential here. Like the the, sure. the first NFT project that I I worked on is for a, a ETH hackathon was I wanted to take the bill of lading of oil uh, trucks that 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 move oil across the United States specifically in Texas. There actually there's the biggest I didn't know this. There's the biggest deposit of of oil in in the world is in the Permian Basin in Texas, but it's you have to drill down. So mm-hmm. offshore it, it makes more fiscal sense at the moment. But we were taking the bill of lading of these oil tankers. Uh, these oil trucks that are transporting oil across the United States, turning it into an NFT. What I want to do with that, add some DeFi flair to it is I'm looking at this as a supply chain solution, right? It's a way that if you take this NFT that represents like, and we agree upon like a standard that it represents this, this, this good in, Mm -hmm. in, you know, in, in shipment, I want to collateralize that collateralize, you know, let's say, you know, just for the sake of whoever's, you know, providing us this collateral, um, 30% of, of, of its value. And then, you know, if something happens, then, you know, you get, you know, you get the whole you know, rest of it, like you know, the way it works for it, for insurance. But we take that collateral and we, um, we lend it or we do some sort of like DeFi thing with it, right? You know, whatever DeFi, or, you know, you lend it, you stake it, whatever it is. Um, Cause now all these, cause I, I do have a little bit of supply chain background, all of these goods that are like in transits that like, you know, it's not, it's, you know, it's, it's accounted for, but it's not really doing things for you. It, now you can have these just sort of as a, a miniature example, you know, of what we're trying to do eventually with crypto is like step outside of like just the, 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 the money side of it and the, and the, and the, you know, the NFT side of it or, or, you know, in its current state, like um, I, I think that there's like a ton of a uh, ton of sort of potential there. Yeah, no, totally agree. Totally agree. And uh, do you guys have any KPIs or goals that uh, you can share with us? I don't know number of users or GBL. Um, uh, so that's actually a really good question. I've never been asked this question before. That that <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. I like. I always say I like good questions better than good answers because uh, it gets you thinking. Um, in terms of like users, I'd I'd love to have, you know, um, I'd love to see as sort of like a first milestone, um, I'd love to see like, well, for, for the alpha, I'd love to see, you know, 5,000 people try out the, 
um, try out the application because mm -hmm. with that, they're connecting their wallets. We're seeing how they behave like on the platform. Uh, we're working with a UX UI professor um, who's based here in the United States, and he's going to help look at this data. He's going to help us go through, you know, a, a lot of, you know, what the people went through and help us optimize the platform from like a user experience standpoint. Um, I think 5,000 is like a really good initial goal and getting people like on and using the platform. And I'd like to see that, you know, in the next like two months, I think midterm a year out, I would love to see that, um, that number be like a hundred thousand, right. I'd like, I'd like to see a hundred thousand people next year using our, you know, beta version 1.5 or whatever it is at that point. Um, mm -hmm. that's like live. That's like, uh, that's, you know, uh, like starting to actually like function, like properly make people money ideally. Right. Um, but yeah, those are, those are two that I'd say like are upcoming, um, in terms of like TVL, I mean, as much as possible, I, 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 think, <laughs> I think that, um, you know, I, I think synchrony has a ton of potential. If you look at other infrastructure level projects, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to, you know, with the analytics, with the indexes and things, I want to say that we're, we're aiming to be an infrastructure level project like, you know, balancer or, or, or compound or, or Aave, something like that. So, I mean, I'd love to see, I'd love to see a, a, a B, you know, I'd love to see a billion. Um, <laughs> I'd love to be like, I mean, even though a, a billion TDL in crypto is not a unicorn, right. A, a billion yeah. A billion, 10 billion in T TVL in crypto would probably be more considered a unicorn. But um, <clears throat> I, I would really like to see that. I think we can definitely do it. Um, it's just a matter of time, right? Because we're right now we're gearing up for <clears throat> to to, you know, have this thing. All of the different uh, all the different layers of it functioning and, and people can test it and all that stuff within the, within the, within a year. Right. Um, after that, I'd, I'd love to see, I mean, I'd love to see us just like skyrocket once these things are live and people realize what they can do with it. Um, that's, that's, that's something that, I mean, that, that'd be a dream. It, it's already a dream come true. Being able to do <laughs> what I love every single day. I mean, I look really tired. <clears throat> I don't, I don't, I don't sound very good. I don't look very good because I'm <laughs> staying up all night and I'm, I'm, we're, we're grinding every single day, but like, I love it. You know, I, I'm this morning I had a call until 2 AM and then I had a 5 AM call. You know, I got like three hours of sleep in between those two and I'm fine. I woke up, I'm like, oh, awesome. Good to go. You know, I get to talk to you. This is, you know, this is great. So, um, yeah, that's, I think that's a very reasonable, um, you know, that's a, that's a nice. Totally goal. agree. That, that's why I'm always drink coffee. Oh yeah. A huge, yeah. huge <laughs> cup of coffee. Every time. I'm like, I'm like out now, but I got my two. <laughs> I don't have to leave it's my desk. It's, it's, <laughs> as, as you said, it's 24 per seven, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we got to be awake as much as possible. Uh, so uh, right now I'm going to roll out a small video, 20 seconds, and we will come back for the questions and answer. Sure. Awesome. Like this video, subscribe to Crypto Villa's channel, and click on the bell button in order to turn on your notifications. Also, don't forget to follow him on Twitter. That's the only way to get notified earlier so you can take advantage of this. Information is power. Early information is profit. So uh, let's hear the first question is from Wagner. Synchrony is built on Solana network, right? But it will be a cross chain too. How this is going to work? Yeah, that's a, that's a really good question. Uh, Solana is uh, not EVM compatible. Um, so it does pose a couple of questions. I mean, it does pose, pose a couple of <clears throat> potential roadblocks, but with um, you know, the wormhole uh, coming out, we're actually uh, going to throw our hat in just because wh why not with the serum wormhole hackathon coming up, um, we are looking to um, get cross chain as, as quickly as possible. Like I said, at, at the sort of the beginning of this users, I mean, the pe we're bridging the gap between early adopters and early mainstream adopters. Right. And in between that gap is um, uh, there's a huge knowledge difference right and mm -hmm. people who are uh early mainstream or you know the, the beginning of this mainstream adoption they don't care what chain they're on they don't care 
you know, where they're getting, they don't care where their NFTs minted on. They don't care about any of that stuff. Like I do, you know, there are certain, there are certain chains that I don't really like to play with. Like for example, uh, BSC, we're still going to be BSC compatible, but they've only got 21 nodes. It's pretty centralized. I care, but m my grandma doesn't, you know, <laughs> you, know oh. you know what I mean? So um, we are going to be cross chain, chain compatible. This Solana provided us a bunch of really great benefits, highest TPS in the game. Um, super, super cheap. Like you, we can't do copy trading if it's costing $70 in gas fees. That's how much I paid for a transaction <laughs> yesterday on Ethereum. It's just not, it's, it doesn't make sense, you know, for, for we're, we're building this for everybody. It's got to work for everybody. It can't just be like, you know, a millionaire who's like spending, like you know, buying a million dollar bag. You know, I, I want this to be agreeable for people who just want to try like with a hundred dollars, $500, something like that, and still be able to turn a profit. Um, but yeah, it is going to be a cross chain tool. We're going to start with Wormhole. Um, I think one of the next places we're going to go to is going to be Polkadot. I love Polkadot too. I'm a huge Polkadot fan. Thank um, you. Gavin, Gavin Woods, amazing. I've been in Polkadot since it since it split, and it was like three. It was like three hundred, then it split down to like three dollars. That's when I got in. Like the day after it split, I was like, "This is kind of interesting." Gavin Wood, X, you know, but you know what they're doing uh, with Substrate, the pair chains, like they're they've got a lot of really interesting things going on. Huge fan of Kasama. You know what I mean? There, there's like a lot of, uh, that opens up a ton of doors for us to get to these other chains. If, if we're, if we're being strategic about it. So. Okay. Uh, the next question here is uh, interesting one, I think from Gustavo. If it is wallet that we copy transactions is hacked. Are these copies blocked? How does security work? That's a, that's a very good question. I've not heard this question uh, before either. This this is a great show, man. You got great questions. You got a great audience. I really like this. The people are you you got to come back here. Oh, time, oh I'm, right? I'm down anytime, man. And, and I also <laughs> want to get down to Brazil too. Uh, so Please. there's a couple of there's a couple of um, couple of interesting ways to go about this, right? And a lot of it ties back into the indexes, right? So if a leader wallet is is hacked which you know we, we're talking you can't help it like these exploits people are, i mean it's it's organic right you know whether people are going to try and find poke holes in it and that helps us ultimately the bad actors help uh blockchain be more secure because we find these exploits they're expensive exploits you know that polygon hack recently could have gone so much worse like uh but the way that we've approached it is because your wallet um, is bound. I mean, you can do a naked follow, um, but I, we would, it's all the warning signs in the world are going to pop up like, Hey, you have to be sure that you want to do this, but we always recommend that you, um, you bind your copy trade wallet to, uh, to an index. So if the person, if you know, the leader wallet gets hacked and that person starts buying a bunch of like Dogecoin and uh, you won't be affected by that because the Dogecoin will be, it will be outside of your parameters that you set to copy it. So it almost on some levels, obviously it does matter if, if someone gets hacked, right? I, I never want to hear that. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sad day. One of uh, Maurice, our, our teammate, he got fished through discord. Actually, it's a clever, clever hack. He got fished through discord. Always check your links, guys. Always check your links. Don't trust verify. Always, always, always. And he connected <laughs> his wallet and they took $10,000 from it. Oh. And yeah, so that's a lot of money. And on the other side is, um, on the other side is, um, well, and then he happened to have one of these uh, uh, monkey dot soul, those little NFTs. I, I don't do a lot with NF NFTs like in the picture space, but that, you know, jumped to $10,000. So he, he broke even in the end. But, you know, these hacks, they can't be helped sometimes, which is why we always encourage, you know, binding to an index. And we also have great auditors as well who are going to audit, uh, who are auditing right now. Um, there it's one of our, it's, it's one of our quickly becoming one of our biggest overheads, but it's so valuable because, you know, like I'm always going to quote like Warren Buffett and, and all that Berkshire stuff, but he says it takes an entire lifetime to build a reputation and only one mistake to make it all crumble. Right. So you know, we're trying to, to be as, as safe and as thorough as possible with all of these things. Um, obviously we can't help if somebody else got hacked, but what we can do is provide the tools to, to have this safety net for your wallet. And then obviously also have alerts. Um, you know, uh, actually that gave, gives me an interesting idea for, for setting up alerts. Uh, 
it's, I'm just, it's, I just, if I, if I don't take this note now, I'm going to forget. Um, yeah, I just made a little note there. Cause I, I want to, I'm thinking about now, like, oh, if you're a leader wallet and you got hacked, we need to have like a, a means of communication. So you can uh, announce to the public that, Hey, I got hacked. Um, you know, and then we can have like an automatic stop on it. But like I said, if you are being constrained to an index, then a lot of that risk is mitigated because the only thing they can do is trade within that index. And mm -hmm. if it's the top 10 tokens on Solana by market cap, then those are all pretty well vetted projects with a lot of TVL, not, a, not as much volatility as anything, you know, below. So. Okay. Okay. And the next question here is from Primo. Uh, do you guys have a list of traders, trade leaders already utilizing the alpha version of the product? And how do you plan to attract new leaders? So there's there's a couple of ways we're doing this. Uh, we're we're in talks with a couple of KOLs. We um, specifically onboarded a couple of these trading communities that you know uh, people are active traders, right? And and if 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 you if you have guys on your side who are good traders, we're, we're always down to, to have these conversations with people. Um, we want to uh, provide a leaderboard that is vetted, you know, ideally we'd have some sort of like KYC or something like that. But that being said, um, anybody, anybody can follow any wallet. It doesn't need to be on the leaderboard. So if, you know, if your favorite traders wallet gets leaked or they post it somewhere and they're not on the leaderboard, you can still follow that wallet. You don't need, you don't need to be on our leaderboard to follow those wallets. And mm -hmm. when um, some, when certain wallets uh, have a very high, what trust factor, then we can start incorporating those into the uh, dashboard as well, or into the leaderboard as well. So it, it, there'll be like this two prong process. One is us actually manually vetting people and bringing, you know, high quality traders who are also going to bring exposure to the, uh, to the ecosystem. And then also the community who's going out, we're going to run these bounty hunting campaigns. So you go out and you like sleuth and you find like profitable wallets and, you know, people who find the most, the highest wallet trust factor, wallets you know that maybe they'll win like an airdrop or something like that um so we're trying to like organically as well uh get as many you know really reputable uh good traders uh on i mean there's a bunch of people i know who are very very good traders but they, they're not kols they're not you know they're just really good with their ta and their fa and maybe they're not very outspoken but i'm gonna follow their wallet you know what i mean because i know sure. they do a lot of research right and you know another interesting thing about that is you know all of the leader wallets are incentivized as well right because we're on a subscription-based service um if people subscribe to your wallet you're going to get a cut of the monthly subscription fee that those people pay right so so everybody uh, everybody wins it's it's incentivized around the sure. around for everybody so even if you're a wallet that is not on the leaderboard and people follow you we'll still send you money you know and you'll just get like random like you know random random like security or whatever uh you know at the end of the month you know even if you don't know like why uh, that'll that'll be why <laughs> Perfect, perfect. Uh, I think the, the last question here from Wagner. Do you have any plans to launch the staking tool before the project launch? It could be a really good for early investor to support and hold the token. Absolutely. Yeah, we are definitely. We, so we do have a fusion pool on Radium. Um, we are also uh, finalizing. It's going to take a couple of days. We're actually going to also provide um, weekly dev updates. So you guys can follow along with like what we're working on this week. This week, we're actually... Um, we're working on uh, getting the uh, the synchrony specific staking um, tool set up, um, and then we're going to test it and then and then deploy it. But yeah, this is in the very very near future. We're going to have this going. That's a good question. I'm glad you asked that because I would have forgotten to mention that. Yeah, we're we're building it. Uh, we, it's almost done. We just want to make sure again that everything's audited, everything's double checked, triple checked, um, and like tested and all that. So perfect, perfect, Andy. Uh, so do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share with my audience? Call the people to the Twitter, to the Telegram. I don't know. Um, yeah. So uh, to, to, I'll, I'll get in the socials. The only other thing that I'm, uh, uh, that I'm going to bring up is um, we actually are uh, launching our own NFT, a utility NFT um, that's coming out soon. Um, I, I, it's funny. I really like frogs. So we, we did it like it's a frog NFT and, and, like, yes, it's a little silly, but I think also uh, the utility side of it, which we really wanted to lean into, it's an access 
token. It gets you um, alpha access to use our platform. Um, you, uh, it grants you like certain social features, cosmetic features. Uh, you'll be able to customize your dashboard with it. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things beyond just the, the collectability, tradability. You also get um, alpha access into some of our private channels. Um, you know, there's, you know, priority, like you just, it's like a VIP club for, for, for synchrony. I um, mean, that's going to be launching soon as well. Uh, that's going to be launching probably the end of next month. Uh, we're working on it with, a uh, in combination with this, uh, with like, a, a we're very close with these other de developers. We're, we'll help them, you know, build their website and stuff. They're more artists than they are developers. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're called Wednesdays. Um, and so we're, uh, part of that is to help because I, I, I love artists. Uh, I, I, I'm a little bit of an artist. I'm a musician. And I, I, I think that is very difficult unless you're the most famous, unless you're Taylor Swift, you know, you're not going to make any money. Right. But I think with NFTs for artists, it represents a really, really interesting um, uh, new way to have smaller, very talented artists get recognized or get at least get paid so they can do what they, they're good at. Right. I don't know how many how many uh, you know musicians I know that are so talented but they have to spend, you know, 40, 50 hours a week doing something that they don't love to do because they need to make enough money to be able to make their art. So um, mm -hmm. that's one of the things we're trying to do is like promote like uh, artists. And obviously they're going to get, you know, um, any of the royalties will be split between them as well, because we've got a couple of artists working on the project. So that's um, the only side news that I have about that. But yeah, uh, if anybody has questions, feel free to reach out to us on like Twitter. Um, we have a, a, a telegram that's uh, that's pretty vibrant. Um, and, you know, come to our website, our discord, we're at all these places. Uh, I try to, to, to be there as much as possible and talk to the community as much as possible because, um, you know, the, it's a relationship, right? And relationship is built on two things for me. It's communication and expectation management. So, you know, I, you know, I want to talk to the community, engage with the community, get these amazing questions that you had and, and, and your community had, please send them over. I love good questions. Good questions are better than good answers, you know? Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much what I've got from my end. I just want to say like, thank you so much for, for, for having uh, me on your show. This has been really fun. Yeah. It was our pleasure. And thank you so much. And uh, please uh, come back some, I don't know, some months later, we can yeah. do an update video. I'd right. love that. I, I, I would. Uh, yeah, and, we, and we've got our own Telegram, so I'll, I'll keep you posted in there. Anything pops up, uh, I'll let you know. And uh, sure. yeah, thanks again. So thank you, Andy. It's a big pleasure. Bye. Awesome. All right. Take care. Pessoal, muito obrigado pela presença. Se vocês ganharam o free money, pessoal, só ir lá no meu canal, na seção About, ó, vou mostrar aqui para vocês. Ei, de novo. Ó. Muito obrigado aí, todo mundo. Clica aqui no meu canal, vai na seção About, me manda um e-mail com a sua wallet da Binance Smart Chain, tá? Manda da Binance Smart Chain e... e é isso. Ah, tem que mandar a partir da sua conta do Google que você ganhou, tá bom? Acho que foi o Wagner, o Primo e, acho que se não me engano, o Gustavo. Tá, as três primeiras que eu selecionei aí, tá bom, pessoal? Às nove da noite hoje tem live, pessoal, tem live. Não vai, não vai deixar de ter live porque tem entrevista, né, pessoal? Vai ter live sim, tá bom? Então, muito obrigado, pessoal. É uh, grande prazer tê-los aí até às nove da noite. Quando a gente fala no Telegram, no Twitter e outras redes aí. Tchau, tchau.